Welcome back to Cowboy Slots, and in today's episode, we're covering five more bad Apple slot machines that you should probably avoid. Hey y'all, Cowboy Slots has a brand new interactive website that is free for anyone to use. On this website, you can interact with others in your area to talk about happenings at your local casino, even internationally. You can also ask questions, get tech help for home slot machines, post your testimonials, and so much more. Check it out today at ropethejackpot.com. If this is your first time to our channel, welcome. We provide you guys with tips and advice from actual industry experience working in the casinos and working with slot machines. Be sure to check out our video library, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to this channel. Now, before we dive into today's list, we've mentioned this before and we're going to mention it again. Everything in the casino is possible to be won on, and maybe one of your favorite games falls on this list and maybe you've won on it, which is fantastic. But when we do these lists of best and worst slot machines, we are looking at all kinds of data, such as the overall odds of the game, the volatility, the information on the par sheets, and how the games are actually designed. So just because a game makes this list doesn't mean it's not possible to win on, it just means it's not very probable, especially when compared to other slot machines. If one of your favorite games does fall on this list, you might want to reconsider it or look at it a little bit differently the next time you play it. I'll also be giving you guys some professional advice on each of these games if you do decide that you do want to play them. So let's start it off with number five, and yes, this one actually is a slot machine. Let's talk all about Go Go Claw. Now, these machines are relatively new and they're not very popular. You'll usually see one, maybe two of them as kind of an end cap piece, especially at a lot of the larger resorts in Las Vegas, but very rarely are you gonna see a lot of these games grouped close together. So why is Go Go Claw on this list? Well, it's not necessarily because of the volatility or the odds, but more so the deception factor. This is a slot machine. It does have a random number generator and the outcome is determined when the claw drops into the ball pit. So how exactly is this deceptive? Well, the outcome is already determined when the claw drops into the ball pit. This is not a game of skill like other traditional claw games. Now, there are actually expert claw game players out there, but this machine is really deceptive because there is actually no skill involved, and it ropes people in by thinking that they're going to have some kind of a skill advantage, when in reality they are not. It works just like any other slot machine. You put the money in, you press the button, and the second the claw falls into the ball pit, the system already knows if it's going to retain that prize or not. And in the event that the system for some reason drops the ball when it wasn't supposed to, it'll actually give the player a retry until the ball actually gets retained. So this game really is kind of a glorified money trash can of sorts. It really entices people to come and play it, and it gives people that deception of thinking that there is a skill involved, when in actuality there is no skill involved in this game. My advice for playing this game is play it one time just to try your luck and then move on from there. Do not sit at this game and attempt to play it over and over and over again thinking that you are going to have a skill in being able to get that ball to drop. It's really more of a novelty than anything else. Number four, the classic four and five real slot machines. Now, this one in particular is not necessarily a game title, more of a type of slot machine. We already know that most of the newer games that are coming out have four and five plus reels, but what about those classic games that have four and five reels? Well, you do have to realize that the RNG does have to produce a stop for each individual reel. Now, on the classic games, the classic games do not have as advanced virtual reel stops as some of the newer games do. So every time that you add an additional reel on these classic games, you're essentially making the game a lot higher in volatility and much harder to hit on. So for these games, here's my advice. Many of the four and five reel classic games actually did not take off in popularity, and most of them have a sister product that is just a traditional three reel slot machine. So if you have a game title that you like and it happens to have four or five reels, such as Double Diamond or Triple Stars, 
go look for that sister product that has just three reels. When it comes to classic games, the less reels are typically going to have a lot better odds. Number three, let's talk about Cash Machine. Now, these games have really been growing in popularity, but they're not new by any stretch. Their history can actually be traced back to a lot of the really old games like 100 or Nothing or 500 or Nothing or some other game of that nature where what you see is what you get. Now, outwardly, these games look extremely simple and they look like they would be lower in volatility, but the biggest factor here is actually not its volatility, but rather the amount that you get back from what you bet. Now, to take advantage of this game and to activate all three pay windows, you do have to play 10 credits. Now, the biggest issue with this game is the fact that getting something that is even 100 credits or greater is extremely hard and extremely rare. And most of the times, if you look at it, if you do get 100 credits, for example, which is the more common higher hit, you're actually only getting 10 times your bet back, which is really, really low and bad for a slot machine. Now, these machines have and do still hit that 10,500 credits, but it is extremely rare. It's not very common, and these machines can go a long period of time before ever hitting that. My biggest advice for this game is to actually avoid it altogether. The biggest problem with it is the bet amounts and the rewards really just don't line up, so you're going to have a lot better returns by playing a different type of slot machine. Before we move into our top two on this list, if you're new to this channel, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell to stay notified for when we come out with future videos. Also, please do check out our brand new website. It is 100% free. Anybody can participate. There's a community board on there where you can actually talk to people in your area, even internationally, about what's going on at your local casinos. You can get tech help ask questions, and even post your testimonials for other people to see and react to. So check it out today. It's a whole lot of fun. It's ropethejackpot.com. Number two on our list is Kino. We get asked about Kino a lot on this channel, and in this video today, I'm going to share some numbers with you so you can actually see for yourself just how bad the game of Kino actually is to play. But first, let's address the fact that Kino has a very devout following. There's a lot of gamblers out there that strictly only play Kino, which is perfectly fine. We want you guys to always prioritize your entertainment value and your budget over anything else. But you might want to rethink Kino after seeing some of these numbers. Now, Kino does have a very long history in the casinos, but it's actually dying at a very rapid rate. A lot of casinos are opting to get rid of live Kino altogether, and even some of the newer multi-game machines that are coming out have actually omitted or limited the selection of Kino that they have on those machines. In recent years, it's lost more popularity than any other game. Now, Kino does have some of the absolute worst odds of any game in the casino, but if you do enjoy playing Kino, I will give you a tip that will help you to better your overall chances so you don't fall prey to these terrible numbers of Kino. So let's do a quick numbers comparison. The odds of hitting the Powerball lottery is 1 and 292 million. The odds of hitting the Megabucks Progressive is a little over 1 and 49 million. Now, before we get to the odds of Kino, just to put this all in perspective, the odds of hitting the bonus on pinball is actually 1 and 64, not 6,400, 64,000, just 1 and 64. Now, are you ready for this one? The odds of hitting all 20 numbers in Kino is this. 1 and over 3 quintillion, meaning you can actually hit the lottery several times in a row. You have a better chance to hit the mega lotteries several times in a row than you do at winning the game of Kino. Now, of course, that number is to hit all 20 on Kino, but the odds of the rest of the numbers are just as bad. In fact, you don't even start getting to the odds less than Megabucks until we start talking about 15 numbers or less on Kino. Now, if you guys are Kino players out there, I did say that I would give you guys a tip on bettering your chances at Kino. So according to all statistical data of Kino, you actually have the best odds with a five pick set. So so if you are going to play the game of Kino, just pick five numbers and try to shoot for that because that is going to give you the overall best odds, statistically speaking. 
So when we create these lists for best and worst slot machines, this is just some of the data that we actually look at. Before we move on to number one, be sure to also check out our lists of other best and worst slot machines to play. I'll leave the links to those videos down in the description below. Finally, now let's move on to our number one pick, and this game actually hits so infrequently that it makes national news when it hits. We're of course talking about Megabucks. Now, Megabucks comes in a wide variety of games, and it has a progressive that starts around 10 million, which entices a lot of people to play it. The odds of hitting Megabucks are a little over 1 in 49 million, and it is a wide area progressive, meaning it is linked and shared with other Megabucks on that network. Now, several very lucky people have had the chance to hit this Megabucks progressive, but it is so infrequent that it actually oftentimes will make national headlines when it does hit. Now, just like the Wheel of Fortune wide area progressives, this jackpot is paid out in payments and it does have a waiting period attached to it. So if you by chance do get very lucky and hit the Megabucks progressive, don't plan on walking out of the casino with stacks of cash just yet. My biggest advice for this game is to just give it a small amount of attention if you want to try for that progressive. This is definitely one of those games that you toss a hundred bucks into, hope for the best, and then sigh and walk away when you don't hit that major progressive, just like if you were playing one of the mega lotteries. Overall, yes, you can win on any slot machine in the casino. It is possible, but understanding that different games are designed differently and learning all of the aspects to watch for is really going to help your gameplay. Don't forget to check out our other videos for the top five best and the top five worst slot machines. Those are linked down below, as well as our video library for free tips and advice. Thanks so much for watching. Check out these other videos and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more slot tips. It's always free. Visit ropethejackpot.com for free guides and a whole lot more. Catch you on the next episode.